Hi everyone and welcome to Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to be talking about the properties of oxides in the periodic table. As ever, let's begin with an overview. So we're going to be talking about definitions and examples of the four main types of oxides that we consider. We're talking about acidic, basic, a new type called amphoteric, and neutral oxides. And once we've gone through definitions and examples of each of them um, and locating them in the periodic table, we're going to look at how we, we classify oxides. What you know, what, what sort of pattern that we can pick out as a result. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with acidic oxides to begin. Okay, so looking at our periodic table here, so what, when we're looking for our acidic, oxide, uh, acidic oxides, we're looking at this kind of area of the periodic table, generally speaking. Okay, so we're looking at the non-metals end of the periodic table. So non metals. Okay, um, so for something to be considered to be an acidic oxide, it's got to do one of two things. It's got to either react with water to form an acid, um, so, so a named acid that we can identify, or if it reacts with base to form a salt. Now the reason that we establish these two conditions, and you'll see the same sort of thing with basic oxides, is that some of the oxides that we we want to consider don't necessarily dissolve in water. And so if it doesn't dissolve in water, it can't really react with water. And so using that first rule as the only condition um, that doesn't account for all the behaviour. Whereas all the oxides, whether they um, are soluble or not, will be able to react with base to form a salt. So down the bottom here, we've got one particular example. So we've got carbon dioxide, okay? So um, in the first example, we're seeing carbon dioxide reacting with water to form an acid. This acid is called carbonic acid. Um, we're gonna look, consider this one um, much more in the next few weeks, carbonic acid, because it relates to the carbon dioxide water equilibrium that we have to study. But likewise, carbon dioxide can also react with basic solutions such as in sodium hydroxide to form a salt. This is sodium carbonate and water. So carbon dioxide, for example, fulfills um, both criteria. Now having a look at basic oxides. So when we're looking at basic oxides, we're looking at this sort of area of the periodic table. Ooh, excuse my very rubbery sketching here. Okay, so we're looking at metals. And excuse my rubbish handwriting, but you know. Okay, so for something to be a basic oxide, um, it's got to either not react with soluble base solutions, like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, or react with acids, or it reacts with acids to form a salt. So down here, we've picked out one example. We've talked about um, copper oxide, which is in our um, in that kind of region of the periodic table we're considering. Okay. And so copper oxide, which is solid and is insoluble in water, um, when we place it in sulfuric acid, it's reacting to form copper sulfate and water. Okay, so we've noticed copper, so this copper um, oxide is um, black in colour. Um, and then when we react it with um, the sulfuric acid, we get a blue solution. So we can notice the difference there as we change from one form to another. Okay, so that's how we would classify basic oxides. All right, let's get on to the slightly more unusual one that we haven't really encountered, this term called amphoteric. So for something to be amphoteric, um, and, and this, this kind of covers an, a range of different compounds, not just oxides, it describes something that can react with both as an acid or as a base, depending on what we combine it with. Okay, so if, we, if it's behaving as an acid, we've recognised that it can react with base. If it's behaving as a base, it's therefore reacting with acid. Okay, so there's only four particular examples that we identify, okay, and they're all in the metal area. So we've got zinc, we've got aluminium, uh, we've got lead, and we've also got tin. Okay, so they're the, they're the examples that we're going to be considering. Okay, um, so you have, to, you have to be able to identify those specifically, uh, like to, to remember that those are the exceptions to the, the metal kind of rule. So for example, if we pick out zinc oxide, so we can see that zinc oxide can react, is behaving as a base because it can react with acid to form a salt plus water. So in this case, reacting with hydrochloric acid, but also it can react with base. Now this kind of a reaction, pardon me, 
this kind of reaction is not the sort of thing that you've seen before. Um, so what in this situation, we've got a solid zinc oxide reacting with hydroxide ions in the presence of water. Um, to form this type of ion, this, this type of ion is called a complex ion. Um, so, because you can see that it's got a metal, it's got four other kind of components, which are hydroxide ions, all connected together to form a, an ion that has a two minus charge. And now technically this one is called a zincate ion, tetrahydroxozincate. Um, but we don't study complex ions in our part of the course. We would if we did chemistry or art, but um, as our option. Um, you don't really need to know anything more than that, just to recognise that zinc oxide can do both of these things. It can react with acid and it can react with base. Now notice that these aren't the same reaction. It's not the same thing in reverse, um, but it is the same uh, substance reacting with either acid or with base. Okay, now the last of the four categories of oxides we're considering is neutral oxides. Now there's not really very many to consider here um, because neutral oxides, unlike amphoteric oxides, which can, which can react with either, neutral oxides react with neither. Okay, so um, just to, to flip back for a second, so there's only, there's only three examples that we want to identify. Okay, we've got to do with carbon and we've got to do with nitrogen. Okay, so carbon, we have carbon monoxide. And then with nitrogen, we have two. We've got nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide and nitrous oxide, N2O, um, or dinitrogen monoxide. Okay, so those are our three particular exceptions or three particular identified neutral oxides. They are found in the, uh, the non-metal, typically acidic area of the periodic table, um, but they're our identified exceptions. So you notice that not all carbon oxides are neutral because carbon dioxide isn't. Not all nitrogen oxides are, uh, are either because um, nitrogen dioxide and O2 is acidic. Okay, so you have to be able to recognise these specific examples again. Okay, and then so just thinking generally about how we would classify. So this is kind of a list that you can fill in the table at the bottom of your sheet. So some examples of acidic, basic, amphoteric and neutral oxides. So generally speaking, we're seeing that acidic oxides are those that are non-metals uh, combining with oxygen. That is their covalent compounds. Okay, so carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, all of those non-metals when they combine with oxygen form a covalent compound. Whereas then when we're looking at basic compounds, those that involve metals are ionic because we have the formation of the oxide ion. So sodium oxide is actually the sodium ion and then the oxide, the O2 minus ion. And this oxide ion is what can behave as a base. It, it can undergo these reactions. Our four listed amphoteric and three neutral examples that we've identified already. So our amphoteric ones are specific metal oxides and our neutral ones are specific non-metal oxides. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.